What's going on everybody? Jesse here and welcome back to another basics video. In today's video, we're going to talk about hard references. So what is a hard reference? Well, a hard reference is a direct pointer to an asset or object that is set during compile time. This means if you delete the asset or object that a hard reference is pointing to, your code will no longer compile. Likewise, if during runtime you delete or destroy the hard reference object, such as a bullet or a gun, you no longer have access to that object. And if you don't handle it properly, when you try to access that object through that reference again, you'll get the dreaded access none error. But regardless if you handle it properly or not, even though you destroyed that object your hard reference is pointing to, your game will still require you to have the memory and disk space allocated for that hard reference. The only actual thing destroyed would have been the instance of that object, not the reference itself. On the flip side, a soft reference is an indirect pointer to an asset or object that is set at runtime. Because you have to load the soft reference when you need it, theoretically it will be available to you every time you request it. And unlike the hard reference, as soon as the engine is done with the soft reference, it sends the reference to garbage collection, deallocating the disk in memory needed for it. We'll talk about soft references in a later video. So how can we tell what our objects are referenced and how much space they need? Fortunately, Unreal Engine provides us with some handy visual tools for just this purpose. They're the reference viewer and the size map. Before looking at either of these, I wanted to mention that I'm using the default first person shooter template. I've made absolutely no changes to this project. Go ahead and open up your content browser, find the file that you want to inspect and hover over it and hit right click. And under the references section, you're going to see the reference viewer and the size map. So we're going to check out the BP first person character and I'm going to select the reference viewer first. We'll come back and look at the size map in just a minute. When it opens up, you're going to be presented with a familiar looking graph with some nodes and connected pins. In the upper left corner, you'll notice we have some options we can set in order to view the various depths of our references, which are currently set at one each. This means we can only see the first objects that are referencing our player character and the first objects that our player character are referencing itself. Hard white line between the nodes signifies a hard reference and a light pink line signifies a soft reference. Let's increase the depth a little. I'm going to set the, de the reference depth to 2 and the dependency depth to 6 and let's see what we get. Let's first take a look at the dependencies of the first person character. Although when showing a depth of one, we only had five direct hard dependencies, each of those hard references have hard references of their own. For example, the animation blueprint has references to all the animations, which in turn have their own hard references to necessary settings and the skeletal mesh, which are all hard references made by each individual animation. Next, if we scroll down, we'll see the skeletal arms for the character. From here, you can see that we have multiple materials, material functions, and several textures that all get loaded whenever the arms are loaded. Double clicking any node will send you to its reference viewer. When done searching that object, you can hit the back arrow to get back to where you were prior. In our case, it's the first person character. Now let's take a look at what is currently hard referencing the first person character. From here, you can see all the objects in the project that are currently referencing the first person character. That means whenever the map loads, it will load the game mode, which in turn will load the first person character in all of its downstream hard references. Likewise, when the rifle pickup and weapon component load, they will also directly or indirectly load the first person character. You may note that the first person map, the pickup rifle, and the weapon component seem to load or request the character more than once. Does this mean that the object is creating multiple references to the same object? The short answer is no. The engine's smart enough to know that the object already has a direct reference to the character and will rely on that reference only. So what does all this mean? Sure, when I load the first person character, it loads everything it references, but how does that translate to the game size and memory? Enter the size map. By right clicking on any of these nodes or from the content browser as seen earlier, you can select the size map view. Let's open up the size map for the first person character. Once open, you're going to be presented with a new colorful map showing the size of each file as well as the size of each hard referenced item. On the top right, you'll see a couple of drop downs. The first ones display either what the demand of the game or editor are, or you can choose all. For our purposes, I'll change this to game. The other drop down is to choose whether you want to know the needed disk size or memory size for the given dependency display. We'll talk disk size first, but move to memory in just a moment. Looking back at the map, you can see that the top level is the first person character as a whole. This means whenever this character is loaded, it will require an additional 143.9 megabytes of disk space. That's for each hard reference. Keep in mind that this is not project size, this is space needed while running the game. You know how when installing a new game, it says you need 60 gigabytes to install the game and 100 gigabytes to run the game? This is what that extra disk space is allocated for, runtime disk usage. 
Looking at the map further, it breaks down where that 143.9 megabytes is coming from. And in this case, the majority is coming from the mannequin arms at 138.5 megabytes. To get a closer look, you can double click on the header or hover your mouse over a section to use a scroll wheel. Let's look at the green section. This section is for the animation blueprint and is only requiring 5.3 megabytes for all of its animations. Let's head back to the character by using the mouse wheel down or hitting the back arrow in the top left. Let's go ahead and take a look at the memory size now. Just like with the disk size, you're presented with a map that now shows you the required memory needed for each instance or reference to this object, broken down into all of its smaller parts. In this case, the total memory needed for each reference to the character is 59.5 megabytes. If we extrapolate these numbers and do the math now, we can determine how much disk and memory space is needed for just those five unique hard references to the player character. Just those five references in a default template project, every time you start the game, you will need 719.5 megabytes of disk space and 297.5 megabytes of memory space. That's nearly three quarters of a gigabyte of disk space that will be reserved for the entire lifetime of the game session, regardless if you need the references or not. Now this is the player character and some of these hard references are just needed. The character is important, but are all of these hard references necessary? Let's take a quick look at the rifle pickup. Real quickly, back in the reference viewer so you know where I get the five unique references, if we go to the eyeball in the toolbar, we can turn off duplicates. Doing this will show each object which has a direct or, in case of the map, indirect reference to the player character. Having it show duplicates is probably a good practice because if we eliminated the rifle's direct hard reference to the character, it still shows us that we have an indirect reference to the weapon component and therefore would still load it in the memory. Now let's double click the rifle pickup and give that a quick view. Zooming out will give us the overview of everything referenced by this object. If you want, you can take a deeper look into what that is, but if you, we just select two in the dependency depth, you'll start to see some common things we've looked at already, such as the player character. Let's right click and go to the size map of the rifle pickup. In here, you can now see that the size of the gun is 173.3 megabytes. Further inspection, you'll notice that 143.9 of that comes from the hard reference to the player character. Another thing worth pointing out, while in the character reference viewer, it said that there were two references from the rifle pickup, you can clearly see that it is only holding space for one of those references and not both. Now, if we double click the weapon component header, we can get a more accurate understanding of the size of the rifle pickup. Although this shows the weapon component, you can see that the size of the scalable gun itself, which is the red area, is 28.3 megabytes of disk space. Selecting the memory size shows the gun needs 30 megabytes of memory. So looking at all this, you can begin to see where your overhead is and you can make better choices when communicating with other classes. Those communication methods will come in other future videos, so stay tuned. One last thing I'd like to do is create our own class and add some hard references to it to see their impact. Open up the content browser, select a new blueprint class, derive from actor, and name it whatever you want. In my case, I'll name it test actor. In the content drawer, I'll select the reference viewer for this new class and see what it's got. As you might expect, there are no references or dependencies to this actor. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says it's showing old saved reference. Anytime you make a change, you have to compile and save the object for it to reflect in the reference viewer or size map. In our case, it's a new class, so we just need to save it. Once saved, let's open up the size map. Again, as you might expect, the memory size and disk size for this actor are next to nothing. After all, we haven't done anything with this class yet, so let's head into the blueprint and add a couple things. I'm going to add a new variable called rifle and I'll make it of type pickup rifle and make it an object reference. If we compile, save and head back into the reference viewer, what do you think we'll see? I'm sure you got this right by now, but let's go look. And of course, you'll see a reference to the rifle pickup as well as an indirect reference to the first person character, weapon component, and the gun skeletal mesh. If we check the size map of the test actor, we can see what kind of impact this single variable has made to our test actor. And of course, as we'd expect, we went from kilobytes to megabytes for both disk space as well as memory space. Given what we've learned so far, what do you think would happen if we added a second reference in the test actor to the first person character? Let's head back to the blueprint and find out. Let's head over, create a new variable called player and make it of type BP first person character and make it an object reference. Compile, save and open the reference viewer again. Pause the video and leave a comment with your prediction of this impact. I'm sure you got this right by now, but from the reference viewer, there seems to be zero impact on our actor. Let's open up the size map to just verify. Yep, that's correct. Adding the extra reference made no difference to the size of our actor. Does this mean that you should just start creating all these references simply because something else has the same reference? 
Probably not. While in this case, it would be easier to use the personal player variable than using the rifle variable to get access to the player, it's not the mindset you should be in while creating your games. There are faster and less impactful ways to access other classes than hard references, and it's those methods you should be thinking about first and foremost. There is one last thing I'd like to show you before we end this video, so let's head back to the test actor. In the event graph of the test actor, I'm going to delete our two variables we created, compile, save, and verify in the reference viewer that our hard references have indeed been removed. Now that we confirm the references are gone, I'm going to get access to the player character and cast it to our BP first person character, then plug it into our begin play. What do you think will happen now? Leave your guesses in the comments. With your guesses in place, let's open up the reference viewer. And in here, we do need to refresh it. And there we go. Just adding a cast created a hard reference to the BP first person character. So as you can tell, hard references can be difficult to avoid and that's okay. If you have to make a hard reference, then make your hard reference, but be mindful of it since everything else referencing that class now has that same hard reference. Seek out alternatives such as soft references, interfaces, and event dispatchers. You could even go so far as to creating a C++ module derived from the game instance, putting your commonly used hard references there, then accessing those variables and blueprints. While you would still have those hard references and need the disk and memory reserved, you wouldn't need to worry about inheritance and multiplying those same hard references over and over again. Thank you to the channel supporters listed on the screen. It's because of your generosity that I'm able to continue making videos such as this. If you liked the video or found it useful, please do leave a comment and a thumbs up as it really helps the channel grow. If you'd like to join the Discord or support the channel, links can be found in the description. Again, thanks for watching and until the next one, peace.